Hi, and welcome back to Daydream Manor Farm. I'm Dawn, in case you're new here. I am a second year flower farmer in Zone 8B in South Louisiana. And today, I am in my stem shed. And so, as you can see, I have some seedlings started here. Um, need to get them cleaned up, got some watering to do. But I thought, I, I really was thinking about what did I want to talk about in this video? And I want to go back to some basics. I really want to talk about resources. So join me and let's have a flower side chat. Okay, so let's talk about books. So right after I started researching, um, I decided I wanted to order some books because I am a reader. And that's one of the ways I learn. Visual, auditory, tactile. So I know how I learn. So I needed to give you some books first off. So... Through my research, the first book I came across was actually The Flower Farmer. This was inspirational. And I did go down a rabbit hole. Like, I went and looked at the folks that she has in here. Um, Sunnydale Spring uh, Peony Farm. I went to see if they still had a farm. Like, I was still, I was all up in it. I went down a whole rabbit hole looking at these people. Because I wanted to see, over the years, had they been successful. Um, this was a great book. Um, and I still go back and I read through it. Uh, the next two books, of course, so when you start Googling or whatever search engine you use, um, there will be flower farmers that will pop up. And <clears throat> I went and watched several videos of flower farmers who gave classes. And I, wanted, I picked um, the flower farmer that I chose to do that school with uh, really just based on um, who I felt more connected to, uh, who I identified with, uh, whose business model was a little bit closer to what I wanted to do. Not exactly, but close enough. And so that um, for me was Lisa Mason Ziegler. So if you've not seen any of uh, Lisa's videos or you don't follow her on Facebook, highly suggest you do. She's at the Gardener's Workshop, but she's also the author of the author of Cool Flowers. So I had no idea Cool Flowers was a thing. Um, who I didn't know I could plant these and then they would grow in this I would plant these in the winter they'd overwinter and they'd grow this has been uh, my go-to book so of course she also wrote vegetable vegetables love flowers so as you know out here on the farm we also grow vegetables so this has helped me tremendously um, about how I can map out planting my flowers um, alongside my vegetables all right next up I did get um, Florette's Discovering Dahlias. Disclaimer, I have not looked at it. Um, I planted a few dahlias last year. Eh, ordered a few more this year. I'm going to plant them um, and then probably will be referring back to this book. It's beautiful though, I, but I have not. I don't have, I, I just hadn't looked at it because I haven't been growing those. Uh, whenever I said we grow vegetables, I follow uh, Gary. Pillar Chick. God, I'm probably butchering that name. Um, I follow him on YouTube, so I ordered this book. Um, it is about homesteading being a lifestyle, uh, small garden areas, container growing, all of those pieces have great information if you are starting a garden. <clears throat> okay, this was one of my favorite finds. So I love a good thrift store, and I found this one, A Year in the Garden, and it is a monthly gardening guide for the Gulf South, and that is where I'm located. Um, so this was actually written uh, here in, here about just a, I'm a few miles north of Baton Rouge, and this was what, written um, in Baton Rouge in partnership with the LSU Ag Center. And so it, I, I can't even tell you how many times I go back and forth to this book. So it is broke down by month, what, what you should start, what blooms well. So this is gonna be, um, really important too as we grow our nursery side of the farm where I want to be um, specializing in native grown plants for sale so this I, I will tell you I use this every month this has kind of been my planning guide so if you can find one of these that are based on your region highly highly recommend um, this book has stayed out in this uh, stem shed, this post-harvest handling of cut flowers and greens. So this book I got from the association. Um, it was a little expensive, but it was the cheapest place I could find it. Uh, it has 
every it has flowers listed it talks about stage of harvest um how to store them how to ship them where to cut um has all of those pieces that actually this one actually stays out here on the stem shed because it's just a lot to remember doesn't have everything i grow but it has probably 80 percent of the basics that i grow so that has been extremely helpful all right and then this actually got recommended to me um, by another fellow grower and it's the plant propagators bible and so it talks about it's all about pro, um, propagation and so this is this i'm just getting into i have not started it but i do have it so books was my first thing I did. Then I enrolled in Lisa Mason Ziegler's uh, Form Basics class. Six weeks online, self-paced, um, lifetime access to the resources, and you are a part of her alumni group and on Facebook. And so I have learned a lot from that group. Uh, I still... Two years later, I am still going back and looking at those resources. I'll go run back, look at a video. Um, in fact, just this week, I could not remember what I needed to net, what didn't need to be netted. Went back, watched her video, got that. Uh, another resource that I use, um, besides Lisa's class, I am fortunate enough to sit in a space where we have two major universities um, and both have outstanding ag centers. So one that is closest to me is Southern University. Um, it is an HBCU and they have an amazing ag center. They offer um, what they call a small farmer academy and it is, it goes over six months six months i believe two classes a month and then some on online classes and so we've covered topics like starting your business um <clears throat> what else we've, we've started our business we've had um a tax person come in and talk we've had a banker come in and talk about um, loans and forms we've had uh writing business plans We've gone to the farmer's market to see the behind the scenes and how you apply at a farmer's market and what you should expect, um, how to set up a booth. We have gone out to the Ag Center itself and um, learned about hydroponics and aeroponics and aquaponics. And so it has been an amazing, I think our next trip is to a hoop house where the um, expert there will show us how to get started in a hoop house. Facebook groups that are specific to my needs. So Facebook groups that grow in warm climates. Um, I started Lizianthus last year or this year. Feels like a year. Um, they're hard to they're hard to start. They're hard to maintain. So I joined a group about that. Learning from there. I did have a membership in the Association for Cut Flowers um, the first year. Uh, we got a discount to Lisa's class. I did not renew it this year simply because sometimes I get on information overload and I I needed to cut back because I needed I wanted to spend that money somewhere else this year within my budget because I do try to stay in a budget and so I just felt like um, I could let that go do something else that I needed to purchase and then maybe next year join again so I, I, I will probably join again because it is a great association lots of information there um watching youtube tutorials i have watched um and all kinds i mean all kinds of tutorials right like um soil testing um compost building all of those pieces like not just from one person but from a bunch of people especially from the homestead or commun community uh attended a conference we have a louisiana women in ag conference here actually went to it last month uh was best thing that came well there were several things that came out of there but the best connection i made from there was our usda local office was there now mind you they're 20 minutes from my house and i hadn't had time to go but i drove two hours to a conference and i met them um they hooked me up i now have a farm number and next week i have somebody coming out to look at my property because we're going to look into grants uh for women owned visit for women owned farms to see um what's available and what i can do here because i really want to do a pollinators garden um, and i want to look into their hoop house program so i'm going to take you along on that journey once we get um we get our feet under us so lots of resources is out there don't get overwhelmed um because there's a lot of information out there don't get overwhelmed and only do what you can do so thank you for being a part of this journey with me 
And until we meet again, I hope you're turning all your daydreams into a reality.